There are over 5,600 confirmed exoplanets so far, and you might have noticed that they don't have true names. Some are decently easy to remember, like Kepler-22b, but they quickly go off the rails fast, with planets like Ogle 2016-BLG-390LB. These names aren't just random, they do have meaning that give important data about the planet, but they could definitely be better. For example, in the case of the planet HD 189733b, the HD stands for the Henry Draper Catalog. That's a catalog of hundreds of thousands of stars, and HD 189733 is the 189,733rd star in the catalog. HD 189733b orbits a star HD 189733a, and it got the B designation because it's the second object in the system, the star automatically being the first. Most exoplanets are named like this, and it isn't hard to see that these names aren't very good. They're named after their star, and the star itself is named after the catalog it's in or the telescope that discovered it, like Kepler-22 being the 22nd star looked at by the Kepler telescope. These names do actually have meaning, but despite that, they clearly aren't true, proper names. These are entire worlds, not data points. They deserve names, not designations. And that's already happening, and there is a way for anyone, including you, to name an exoplanet. As of the time I'm making this video, there are about 160 exoplanets that have received proper names. These aren't unofficial nicknames like Bellerophon, Osiris, and Methuselah, but official, IAU-recognized names of these worlds. There are a ton of scam sites that say you can name a planet or a star, but this video isn't about them. The IAU, if you aren't familiar, stands for the International Astronomical Union, and it's the group in charge of classifying pretty much every object in the sky. They're the ones that make the names of asteroids and stars official, and now they're doing it with exoplanets. They're also the ones that created the dwarf planet category, but the part of the IAU involved with naming exoplanets doesn't have anything to do with the Pluto debate. Essentially, the IAU is the final authority when it comes to naming anything in space. Every three to four years, the IAU hosts a global competition called Name ExoWorlds, where the public is allowed to submit names for a few IAU-selected exoplanets, and the IAU then votes and chooses which name will be assigned to each planet. The first with Name Exo Worlds 2015 were about 30 or so planets, including some you might know, like 51 Pegasi b, 55 Cancri e, and some of the first exoplanets ever discovered were given official names. 51 Pegasi b has been named Domidium, for example. The second and biggest competition was Name Exo Worlds 2019, which was different from the others. Every country in the world got assigned one planet and were allowed to name it. Over 110 exoplanets got named this way. Then, most recently, there was Name Exo Worlds 2022, where 20 planets that were prime observation targets for the James Webb Space Telescope were named. I actually entered into Name Exo Worlds 2022, where I tried to name the planet at the time called WD0806-661b, but lost to the name Aura. For some reason, almost nobody knows about Name Exo Worlds, which I find really weird. When the New Horizons spacecraft flew by the asteroid 2014 MU69, it was quickly named Arakoth, and that became common knowledge immediately. When the Lucy spacecraft found a moon around the asteroid Dinkanesh, it was officially named Salam within a few days, and again, everyone immediately started using that name. For exoplanets, this hasn't been the case. Name Exo Worlds 2015 got almost no media attention, and neither did 2019. 2022 got a bit more, but still almost none. I can't find the reason why. The IAU is pretty good at publicizing names for asteroids and stars, and I don't know why the exoplanet names are lagging behind so much. There's a pretty good chance you still know the planet Domidium is 51 Pegasi b, or Janssen is 55 Cancri e, despite the fact that these planets were named over 9 years ago. But I'll talk about why Name Exo Worlds is so unknown later, because the reason for it is actually pretty interesting. This video is about how you can name an exoplanet. The first thing you have to do is wait for the next Name Exo Worlds to launch. They've happened every 3-4 to four years apart so far, and the results of the 2022 edition were announced in 2023. So, if I had to guess, the next one could be in 2025 or 2026. But this has not been confirmed by the IAU, this is just my personal guess based on past competitions. I'm making this video now because, for me at least, it took me literal months to come up with a name I thought was good enough and didn't break any rules. It's never too early to start thinking about names and planning for the next name Exo Worlds now, whenever that is, if you want to join. Getting your name approved is a very long process, and you can never be too prepared if you actually want to name a planet. And, of course, there are a ton of rules. The IAU doesn't mess around when it comes to star and planet names. There's a reason none of the exoplanets so far have had any joke names, and likely none ever will. So, if you're hoping to name one planet McPlanet Face, that name alone breaks almost half the rules, so you have no chance. It would also be extremely difficult to even formally propose a name like that, because of the most difficult aspect of the Name ExoWorlds program. You have to create a public outreach event. That means that in addition to following all the exoplanet naming rules, which I'll get to in a bit, you have to make a team of professional and amateur astronomers, teachers, students, and involve the general public in some way. 
you have to teach people about exoplanets, your name, why you chose it, and astronomy in general. This rule alone discourages people from trying to name an exoplanet, because creating an entire public outreach event is extremely difficult. This was the most challenging part of my 2022 campaign, but it is possible, and in some ways, easier than you might think. This is another reason why I'm making this video now, since if there is another name Exo Worlds in a year or two, it's probably a good idea to have an idea of what you want to do for public outreach. Now, onto the actual rules for naming the planet. In addition to explaining the rules, I'll also be providing examples of names that were accepted in the past, so you know what the IU wants to see in a planet name. The first and most important rule is that the name has to be culturally, geographically, or historically significant. This one is fairly obvious, as the IAU itself says, the name should be something worthy of being assigned to a celestial object. They're vague on what significant means, but accepted names of the past have ranged from Aegir, the god of the sea in Norse mythology given to Epsilon Eridani B, to Bambarush, a word meaning bear cub in Mongolian given to Hat P21B. The name could also be drawn from themes relating to the sky or astronomy, but this isn't required. Of the 20 planets from the 2022 name Exo Worlds, only two, Astrolabos and Quankoa, were astronomy-themed names. The second most important rule is that you can't just submit one name, you have to submit two. One for the planet, and one for the star it orbits. Not only that, but the two names must have a common theme with one another. Going back to Aegir, its star was named Ron, another Norse god. For a star Saibo and his planet Ibarapita, the system theme was culturally significant trees native to Uruguay. The planet and the star need to have a theme like that, so that the names make sense with one another, and so if any additional planets are discovered later, they can also be named something in line with the previous names. However, this rule was broken in the past by the planet Orbitar in the 2015 name Exo Worlds. Its star is named Fafnir, a mythological Norse creature, but Orbitar is a made-up word supposedly paying homage to NASA. This actually breaks two rules. First, there's no theme, and second, Orbitar is a made-up word that isn't culturally significant. Made-up words made specifically for the competition aren't allowed. These names have nothing in common with one another and shouldn't have been accepted. But it doesn't really matter because new evidence shows that the planet Orbitar was likely a false positive and doesn't actually exist. The next rule relates to indigenous languages. If you're using a name from an indigenous community, a member of said community must not only be a part of your outreach campaign, but you have to get permission from the leaders of the community to use that name. The name also has to be in the Latin alphabet, the alphabet you see in the title of this video, and has to start with a capital letter. Special characters like apostrophes or numbers aren't allowed unless the word you're using includes them, like the planet Kua Kua, a word meaning butterfly in the Bri, Bri language, including an apostrophe. You also can't name a planet after something copyrighted or for commercial purposes, like YouTube, or something primarily known for a political or military purpose. So, the planet Beirut, which was named after a city in Lebanon, is allowed because the city is culturally significant and ancient, and isn't primarily known for being the capital of Lebanon. Acronyms are also not allowed. Another extremely important rule is that the name you propose can't already be in use. This means that if a planet, moon, comet, asteroid, dwarf planet, star, or any other space object is already using that name, you can't use it. So, names like Zeus are off-limits because there's already an asteroid named that. The IAU has a full list of all named objects I'll link in the description so you can see if any of your names are already in use. I know that for me personally this has destroyed many of my name ideas, so it's extremely important that you make sure there's nothing already named the thing you're choosing. This also means that most of the Greek and Roman gods aren't allowed, since most of them already have things named after them. Science fiction almost exclusively names fictional planets after characters in Greco-Roman mythology, and we've been accustomed to seeing those names as sounding better than others. But the overwhelming majority of name Exo Worlds names have been from other mythologies and cultures, which there are thousands of. Using Greek or Roman names are still allowed, of course, like Levantes and Tylos from 2022, which are both Greek words. There's also Let, named after the river to the underworld in Greek mythology. But if you plan on trying to name an exoplanet, I'd recommend staying away from Greek or Roman words. We have enough of those already, the entire solar system is named after them. There are thousands of cultures with mythologies just as deep and complex as Greek mythology that deserve to be represented. Of course, you don't need to use mythology at all. The planet Pulley was named after a Hungarian dog breed, and Falinciam was named after the Thai name for the Siamese Sapphire. Planets don't all need to be gods, and while they are allowed, some of the best names that have come out in name Exo Worlds aren't related to mythology at all. However, this rule has been broken before as well. The names Hypatia and Hyesi are names that were used by asteroids first, but also given to exoplanets. But the IU has gotten much better at this recently, and there haven't been any duplicate names. And finally, the rule I most disagree with, you can't name a planet after a person, living or dead. This applies to pets as well, and names relating to the organization proposing the names, which I can understand, but I don't really see why the names of people aren't allowed. 
especially because naming a planet after a person was allowed in both 2015 and 2019, but not 2022. There are 12 planets named after people, and I don't see why this isn't allowed anymore. And with that, those are all the rules for naming an exoplanet. The name must be culturally significant, not a person, not already in use, not related to politics or military, and the word has to actually mean something, can't be gibberish or an acronym. Once you submit a name, you also need to write a paragraph less than 300 words and a video of less than 3 minutes explaining why your name should be chosen. After that, the IAU will take a few months to narrow down the candidate names until one is chosen for each planet and each star. Name Exoworlds is the only way for exoplanets to get official names, and the winners of each competition become recognized by the IAU as the official name of the planet. The IAU also has to get permission from the person who discovered the exoplanet to name it, but so far, I don't think anyone has ever denied a name, so you shouldn't need to worry about that. So, if this is the case, then why haven't many people heard of this before? Some of the most iconic exoplanets have official names, and almost nobody uses them. Why do people still insist on using the designations rather than the proper names? The easiest answer to this question is people simply don't know the names. These names haven't been publicized very often for whatever reason, and so most people don't even know they exist. However, this isn't just because people aren't talking about the names, it's also because many astronomers are going deliberately out of their way to not use them. From what I've seen, a lot of professional astronomers don't like name exoworlds and don't use the names. I've seen a few major reasons put forth for this, but personally, I don't find their reasons particularly convincing. The first reason I've seen for people to not use the proper names of exoplanets is because the designations are more well known and have been around for years, and it would be confusing to suddenly switch to new names. I disagree with this. The asteroid Bennu was discovered in 1999, but only named Bennu in 2012. This is also the case for thousands of other asteroids and even dwarf planets. Eris only got an official name a year after it was discovered. There was no confusion when Bennu or Eris or any of the hundreds of other asteroids and dwarf planets were renamed. Nobody stuck to using the designation instead of the name. There's no reason exoplanets can't be the same. People just switched to the new names and everything was fine. Another reason is that there are simply too many exoplanets for every single one of them to be given a unique name. It would be too hard to memorize every name and there would inevitably be duplicates. But right now, we only know of less than 6,000 exoplanets and I doubt this number will go above 500,000 in our lifetime. Eventually, once we discover billions of planets, we will run out of names. But we don't need to worry about that right now, because we won't anytime soon. And if we do somehow run out of names, we can just change the rules and use duplicates. There are duplicate town and street names all across Earth, and nobody gets confused about it. It's all about context. If sometime in the future we've discovered trillions of planets and have a ton of name duplicates, and you just say the planet Boca Prince, then there could be confusion. But if you say Boca Prince, the gas giant that orbits Malmok, then that's much more specific. Or you could say the Boca Prince 700 light years away from Earth. You also don't need to memorize these names, and even if you did, people are already memorizing the designations anyway. It wouldn't be hard to switch. Also, there are thousands of asteroids getting named. Why are we worried about there being too many exoplanets to name when we're naming thousands and thousands of asteroids with no problem? Exoplanets do have a lot more naming rules, limiting the options for names significantly, but it's fundamentally the exact same situation. I can't help but find it hypocritical that the people against name exoworlds are fine with naming asteroids, but not planets. There's also the argument that we should be naming only important exoplanets, not the hundredth hot Jupiter a thousand light years away. This reason was especially used with Name Exoworlds 2019, when every country was given a planet pretty similar to one another to make it fair for every country. And while I do agree that more interesting or important exoplanets should take priority for naming, I disagree with the notion that the current exoplanets we've discovered are unimportant. All the named exoplanets so far have been part of the first 5,000 exoplanets ever found. In the trillion or more planets in the Milky Way, that's a huge accomplishment. That means every single planet we've discovered so far will be in the top 0.0000000005% of exoplanets discovered, making every single one of them not only unique, but deserving of a name. And the last common reason I've seen for not using the proper names of exoplanets is that the existing designations provide important information about the planet. For example, the name Kepler-186f implies the planet is the fifth planet in its system, orbits a star called Kepler-186, and due to the lack of an A, it's probably a single star. And this is true, the designations are important. But the thing is, the average person doesn't care. The average person doesn't look at Ogle 2016 BLG390LB and think, this planet was discovered by the Ogle telescope in 2016 as the 390th star observed by it. They don't know what any of those words or numbers mean. It's just random keyboard smashing to them, and any non-astronomer will find it hard to care about a planet like that. I feel like people underestimate the importance of names. Names give a person something to relate to, and to make them care about it more. 
If we want more people getting into astronomy, then we should be using the proper names of exoplanets as much as possible. To illustrate this point further, here's an example. If I told you about the planets WASP-43b and WASP-19b, then those names don't sound very unique, and those planets just sound similar to one another. But if you use their proper names, Astrolabos and Bonxia, then suddenly both planets not only sound more interesting, but unique and different from one another like they actually are. Yes, the names provide information about the planet, but you can get the same information from its Wikipedia page. It's only slightly more convenient, and compared to the amount of people that could potentially become more interested in astronomy simply because of how important names are, I think it's worth it to sacrifice convenience for a few astronomers in exchange for getting the public more involved. It's not like the designation would go away, either. The IAU itself says that the proper names of exoplanets aren't meant to replace the designation, but to be a name alongside it. So, hopefully, this video will serve as not only a guide for how you could name an exoplanet, but why we should use these names far more often. Getting the public interested in astronomy should be one of the most important goals for any astronomer, and we must make this field seem interesting by any means necessary. Because anyone even somewhat involved in astronomy knows that it's extremely interesting, and it should be easier to access and digest for as many people as possible. More astronomy enthusiasts can only be a good thing, and a more informed population will help stop misinformation. Using the proper names of exoplanets will only be a very small step in that direction, but any step in the right direction is worth it. This is why whenever I talk about a planet with a proper name in a video, I exclusively use its proper name, only mentioning the designation once or twice. In the description will also be a link to a Wikipedia article with a full list of every named exoplanet, so you can be more informed as to what exoplanets have proper names. Hopefully, we see these names used more often, and we get more creative exoplanet names in the future. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, check out my other videos about exoplanets and space colonization.